celebrating 13 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Cardinal Justin Regali, Part 2. Welcome back to another edition of Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. These are great stories about great people whose lives prove that anything is possible. This is part two of my interview with His Eminence, Cardinal Justin Regali. Thank you for being here today. Pleasure. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Now, you, you served at the Vatican, and to get you up to date, um, the Cardinal was born in Los Angeles, California. At the age of 26, he became a priest. He was called to study in Rome. He ends up working at the Vatican. He has worked for four popes. He's actually served six and uh, he has decided that he has chosen East Tennessee to retire, and that's why we have the opportunity of having him here today. So we were talking about his education. Uh, he got his PhD in canon law and went on to serve uh, the Vatican, uh, was in Madagascar as well. But you also um, became a bishop. Uh, you served not only in St. Louis, but also in Philadelphia, if, if my information is right. So let's talk about how you get back to the United States of America, and then we'll get over to your service to uh, many popes. Well, when, when I was in the, the uh, papal secretariat, they call it the Secretariat of State, I was in the English language department. I was the director of the English language department. Then at a given moment, namely 1985, I was appointed the, uh, the president of the Pontifical Ecclesiastical Academy in Rome. The one you attended. The one I attended, right. which I never <laughs> thought I would end up as the president. Anything is possible, right? Anything <laughs> is possible. And in being uh, appointed there, that brought with it the, the title of bishop. So I was actually ordained a bishop. Uh, so that you could run that school? Uh, yes. And the person that ordained me was Pope John Paul II. Wow. Yeah, he, he ordained me in 1985. And so I was a bishop in Rome for about nine and a half years. Uh, first in the academia, the Pontifical Ecclesiastical Academy. Secondly, after that, they moved me to another office, which was the Congregation for Bishops, the office that the Pope uses for the, the selection of bishops throughout the world. And then after, uh, uh, after four and a half years there, at that point, I was named the Archbishop of St. Louis. And uh, Pope John Paul II, he himself uh, told me that I had a, uh, an important job, a pastoral job, because I was serving the bishops in this particular office. And right. he says, that's very important to, to assist and serve the bishops. But he says, there's another experience that it might, you might appreciate having, and that's to have your own, your own local church, to have your own people. And so he proposed to me to become the Archbishop of St. Louis. And so what was that like going, leaving the Vatican and coming back to the United States and being an Archbishop? Because those are two really different worlds. Um, absolutely. Two, there were two factors that helped me, well, three factors. One was the grace of God, obviously. But the, the other factor was that during all the years that I had been in the Vatican now, I was in the English language section, we were dealing constantly with the affairs in the United States. Uh, I mean, day after day, uh, the affairs of the church, but also affairs that touched just things. So uh, that was very useful to, to be up to date and in many, you were you were very familiar with, with what lots was going of things. On in uh, the obviously, it's not the same as being on the being on the scene every day. But so when I came after having been in Rome for for thirty years, Madagascar for, for three years, etc., then I had a great blessing though because they uh, when I came there, I had a priest secretary uh, who who knew St. Louis very very well because he was born there and he was a priest there, and uh, he, he turned out to be my secretary, and later on my vicar general, and it's Bishop Sticker <laughs> of Knoxville. Uh, so, so look at grace, right? <laughs> yes, and uh, he was able to assist me, to get to know the people, to explain things to me. It, it was a real help, and uh, 
so that, that helped me in my transition, and the people were very welcoming. Yeah. They were very welcoming. And I, I will say that, that the experience of having been in Rome under four popes, and uh, although Pope John, I did not actually work for him, John the Twenty Third, but I was in Rome under him, and then the next three I, I worked very closely. The, the experience did help. Uh, it, it was a pastoral experience, and uh, and to see how how the Pope, how all these different popes, how they lived and worked, and uh, it, it was a great uh, great help. My guest is uh, His Eminence Cardinal Justin Regali. We'll take a break. You're watching Anything Is Possible. More in a moment. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. The reason uh, Jesus gave us his word is so that we might live them and that we might, uh, might face situations because he never said it was going to be easy. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill, and my guest is His Eminence, Cardinal Justin Regali. Thank you for being here today. Like I said during the break, I don't know if you're having a blast, but I am having a very, <laughs> great time. Very enjoyable. So you come back to the U.S., you go to St. Louis as Archbishop. Yes. You serve there. It starts to round out your experience because you've had a worldwide experience by now. Uh, I think when we had a conversation on the radio, you said, one of the most powerful things that happened to you through serving these popes was you realized the universal nature of the Catholic Church, that it has a universal reach. And so depending on where you are, you might have a very myopic view of the faith, but there's a wide angle lens when you are at the Vatican and you see, so you come back here, you serve in St. Louis, you have that pastoral experience you also go to Philadelphia. The, the interesting thing though is here in the United States of America, along that same time, the Catholic Church was going through a lot of upheaval. Um, there was a lot of challenge. There were scandals. The church was really going through a hard time and you got to serve through some of that time. Talk a little bit about what you learned about possibility faith and kind of making it through those deep and difficult waters, because they were. Absolutely, and it was a question of trust, but if I could just begin by saying, when I came to St. Louis, because you mentioned the international character of the church, I was very privileged to, uh, that he came with me from Rome. The, the number one cardinal in the Catholic Church at that time, he was the dean of the College of Cardinals. Mm -hmm. And he came because he was the one whose assistant I was in my last years in Rome and his name was Cardinal Guntine. He was from Africa. Mm. And he was, he was the number one, he was the dean of the College of Cardinals. And he wanted to come and, uh, I mean, it was a great favor to me to come to install me in the name of the Pope. And uh, gave me a, his complete support because I'd worked with him and for him, for the Pope, uh, for the years before. And uh, the people were thrilled to, to to see this this man because besides his his experience uh, he had such a profound human charism of just how he moved with the people and loved the people etc but you were talking about the uh, the challenges of, of the church and yes uh, one of the immediate lessons that we know is Jesus said in the world you will have distress you will have problems but he says, have confidence. I have overcome the world. I mean, that's, that's pretty great in the gospel. There was something that just happened uh, just then as you were talking to me. When, when you started to quote the scripture and when you mentioned Christ, you should have seen the way your eyes just lit up. Oh, well. I mean, I mean, they just, they really like lit up when you said, mm -hmm. have confidence. There was. What is that energy that just passed through you just then? I mean, your eyes just came alive. The word, your faith means everything to you. That, that, that's what my read would be is that that's been your anchor through all the turbulence is what you believe as opposed to what you see. Well, the, you know, and, and what we believe, we're so fortunate to have God's word in the Bible and 
his Jesus's direct words in the gospel, huh? And uh, this is what what sustains us, you know, the, the word of God in the Psalms. It says, "Your word is a light to my path," uh, and on and on it goes. So, uh, what do we do? We listen to Jesus, but we listen to his words especially in the, the New Testament. And that's, that's what we have. And the reason uh, Jesus gave us his word is so that we might live them and that we might, uh, might face situations because he never said it was going to be easy. Right. He, the, there is an inevitability that there is going to be turbulence. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be. And so the remedy is would you have confidence not in the fact that you've conquered exactly but that i have exactly exactly no no that's very well said and it's a synthesis and so but this was in the life of the apostles remember jesus came walking on the waters and the apostles uh, thought they were going to drown and uh, jesus says do not be afraid it is i do not be afraid the uh, it is i do not be afraid and so the church has to, now, we're all imperfect and we all, we have our, all our human weaknesses and all our, our uh, limitations, etc. But it's very important that we have clear ideas that, that we turn to Jesus, especially because we need him. And we, we have these problems and they're, pro they're personal problems for each person, you know, but they're also problems for the community, for the church. And so all we can do is face the joys and the, and the, the, uh, the wonderful blessings, but also the challenges and the difficulties. And if we've sinned, we have to confess our sins and we have to begin over again because forgiveness is possible. For forgiveness is, is possible. Forgiveness is one of those any things, right? <laughs> Absolutely. What about this cross you're wearing? Well, this, this cross is, uh, is precious to me because it was a, a personal gift handed to me by uh, Pope John Paul II, who's now St. John Paul II. And uh, besides the figure of Jesus crucified on the front of it, on the back it has the Pope's coat of arms, the Pope's co coat of arms, uh, John Paul II, and now he's a saint. And so I treasure it greatly because he was the one that gave it to me. And uh, he was the one that for so many years, you know, he was Pope for 26 and a half years. Long time. Yeah. Popes today, I, I, I just read an article recently that said even the current Pope uh, is considering having a short term. Yeah, he's, he's made some allusion to the fact that he, you know, he, he may follow the example of Pope Benedict and resign. Uh, he hasn't. He's just alluded to it, so we don't know what it's. But uh, John Paul II was 26 and a half years, and that gave him the opportunity not only to work with the energy of his youth because he was elected at 59 years of age, but it also gave him the opportunity to give the example of his, of his suffering uh, at the end when he offered up suffering with so much love, and he mesmerized the world because of just his goodness, his love, uh, and uh, the fact that he traveled, he traveled to approximately 130 countries, and uh, it was it was wonderful what he stood for. Um, when you pray, hmm. what do you pray? Well, you know, as as priests, we the, the church gives us a very beautiful prayer book. It's called the, the breviary. And it's made up, it's made up of basically of psalms. We're constantly saying, saying the psalms. We, the, the 150 psalms are arranged in such a way that, that in the course of four weeks that we say every psalm. But it's also made up of the readings, of, of the readings from uh, the New Testament and the Old Testament. I want, I want to take a break in, in, in our final segment. I want to ask you about your personal faith. And um, I have a, I, I'm 
I don't know. I have a question. I don't know if you've ever been asked it before, but I want to ask it anyway sure. with, with, with your permission. And I want, to, I want to ask you about your personal faith. It's such an honor to have you uh, with us today. You're watching Anything is Possible. My guest is His Eminence Cardinal Justin Regali. More in just a moment. Coming up. I, I saw all of them. I, I, I've been with all of them and uh, um, privileged to have my picture with all of them. This week, our Home Federal Bank Community Spotlight is on Shangri-La Therapeutic Academy of Riding, or STAR. STAR pairs children and adults with disabilities with horses to help the riders experience personal achievement. To learn more or see how you can get involved, visit rideatstar.org. What a delight it has been to have as uh, my special guest on Anything is Possible, His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Justin Regali. Thank you for being here today. My delight. We were talking about your personal faith, and, and I asked you what you pray, and you were telling me about uh, the Liturgy of the Hours or the Breviary. Uh, here's what I wanted to ask you. I had two questions for you, but one is, what happens to a person's spirit when they pray the Psalms? It, beautiful question. Well, first of all, we have to remember that the Psalms are part of the inspired Word of God. But, and they, they've been praying, Christians have been praying these for years, but these were also the prayers of the chosen people, the Jewish people. And Jesus, as a Jew, Jesus prayed the Psalms. They were part of His prayer. And he's bequeathed this. And so there are all kinds of references in the Psalms to... So this is the DNA of the faith, really. Exactly. Exactly. So what happened to you? What happened to you personally as you... Because this was the, this was the real struggle for my dad and many other ministers that I knew. So you have the function of a minister. And there's something you have to be in service to the people. But in order to serve the people, you have to keep your tank full. We need this for ourselves as if, we're going to, uh, if we're going to proclaim it. And, that, and Jesus says in the uh, Gospel of St. John, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Apart However, me. If, the, if the branch withers mm -hmm. and you get separated from me, then it's over. Huh? Yeah. And you're not going to be, uh, as a minister, a priest, a preacher, uh, if you're separated, then it's, it's all gone. Huh? You won't have the energy. But with God's help, staying close to Jesus, united in the vine with Jesus, then you have the power to proclaim his word, and it's, it's truly, truly meaningful. Yeah, with me, all things are possible, right? <laughs> yeah. And Saint, uh, Jesus says, uh, without me, uh, nothing is possible. Yeah. And and with him, everything is possible, yeah. Okay, so here's my, here's the other question. Um, so working for um, and being connected to six popes in your lifetime, did you ever want to be pope? And is that, and, I, I, and I'm cautionary yeah. as I ask the question because I don't know if it's wrong for an archbishop, a bishop, a cardinal, to aspire to that, if that is a is that is that a defiling aspiration to want it, and did you ever say, I wonder if or I want to be pope? No, you know you you talked about a, a defiling a aspiration, but <laughs> even more than defiling, it's foolish. Uh, it, it's foolish because you know there's there's no there's no possibility. There's, there's one pope in the whole world. And first of all, the, uh, the people that have been privileged to be around him, they, they, you know, you, you'd have to have a pretty good asp, uh, evaluation of yourself to think, oh, sure, uh, you know, that, uh, that, that, that'd work out great. Bring, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> right, right. Bring it on. No, uh, but also the... Uh, somebody like myself that's been around the Pope uh, has seen John Paul II in his hour of suffering and how he gave everything. I, I mean, to think that you would be the best possible person to succeed him 
Yeah. yeah. And, and that's what I wondered about, if seeing the weight of that responsibility made you go, that is a calling. That is not an aspiration, right? That is something that you have to have been called and chosen for that as opposed to, okay, step two is this and step three is that. And yeah. you actually, but you were there as this pope was selected as well, correct? Yes, this pope and Pope Benedict, I was among the uh, electors. And then, so those two popes, and then the, the popes before, the, the three before that I worked for, and then the one before Pope John the Twenty-Third. I was in Rome. I was assisted at many, many things, but I just didn't work personally for him. But uh, I, I saw all of them. I, I, I've been with all of them, and uh, um, privileged to have my picture with all of them, except John the Twenty-Third. I'm just in in the group of the Vatican Council. So would you do this? Um, would you leave us with uh, just a, a closing word of possibility? Well, uh, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And, you know, if we embrace him, if we follow him, the way, the truth, and the life, we're going to be able to reach our destiny. We're going to find that our destiny is is not only possible it's to it's going to be realized and our our destiny is union with god jesus says i am the vine you are the branches and that's not something only for this life it's something for forever and but the key is jesus and the key is our relationship to jesus and the rest is to be enveloped in the wonderful love of God wow. through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Cardinal Justin Regali, thank you for being here today. Thank, thank you, Hal. Thank you very, very much. Proof positive that anything is possible. We'll see you next time.